Welcome everyone! I'm Ray, and today we are going to take a look at chapter 13 and 14 of Anti-Entropy, visual novel. <laughs> and I'm really excited! Like, actually it's been a while now for me since I've recorded uh, the visual novel. So, I mean, I have to get into it, like, first. <laughs> but I'm so excited because I think, like, with the last one, where it actually wasn't like, I mean, there wasn't something incredible, incredible happening, except for Schrödinger, Nancy, and Elias, who found something out. And I hope we get more explanations to that as well. <laughs> so, without further ado, let's get straight into this video, shall we? When we last left off, we were kind of talking about a song with Einstein and uh, we are in the hotel I think so let's see a long long time ago when Roswell was merely a small nameless town next to the Pecos River when Bikini was merely the name of an atoll when I was merely half my current age oh do we get backstory <gasps> what 1946 Zurich Switzerland <gasps> what where are we? Oh my goodness! And she's pretty. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Why is she so pretty? Oh, that's Einstein's mother! <gasps> okay, I'm sorry, but she's gorgeous. <laughs> Lisa, a nice uncle is coming to have a chat with you today. He's nothing less like those ignorant, incomp incompetent, psychiatric, psych. He's nothing like those ignorant, incompetent psychiatrists from before. Please try to get along with him. Oh, so what now? Yeah, Einstein actually, that's interesting. Don't worry, he said he won't urge you to go back to school and take those boring classes. He's a very famous expert, different from the others. Huh. So she was too smart for school, basically. Is that right? Hmm. Let me clarify with a quick supplement. This person is my mother. She's an auditor. She's usually very busy at work and could only be at home on Sundays or Christmas. Oh. A very boring job, don't you think? This person is my father. He's also, like... <laughs> Her jeans. <laughs> Why are both of them so hot? Okay. This person is my father. He's a designer. To be precise, he designs hands for clocks and watches. An even more boring job, am I right? It, it's a good job, don't... No? <laughs> I mean, as long as they're fun. So you can imagine, as the only person in this family who is obsessed with musing over metaphysics, how painful it must have been. Yeah. So you can imagine, after I voluntarily dropped out of school, they found five psychologists to see me over the course of three months. Ah, yes. Metaphysics. Since we're talking about a story from back then, I should also describe things from my perspective back then. Oh, hell yeah. <gasps> hey, I'm Carl. Carl Gustav. You could call me Carl or Gustav. I don't mind either. Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Both Carl and Gustav. Are you supposed to be a king of Sweden? <laughs> People always tease me about that. By the way, I heard you were doing some interesting private research lately. Do you mind filling me in? Aww, she doesn't trust him, huh? Hmm. How could the shriveled old fart ever understand anything? Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> I think you can try and test me first. One should explore all their options before coming to a conclusion, don't you agree? <laughs> I'm not one to brag, but when I was at university, my grades in science were pretty good. I swear, it's true. I had the highest mark in geometry class, taught by Hilbert himself. <laughs> so, do you know what is the maximum number of straight lines that can be orthogonal to each other in space? If your answer is wrong, please leave, okay? When I thought about it afterwards, I realized this man wasn't an ordinary person. I thought I could use this problem, whose answer I could readily change on the fly, to brush him aside effortlessly. But I never expected that by the time I opened my mouth and posed the problem to him, he would have already won. 
At the very least, he was already miles ahead of those four so-called professionals from before. Orthogonal straight lines. Isn't that just however many lines you want? <laughs> the dimensions of space can be considered limitless. Just their coordinate axis alone can already be considered to be too infinite. Perpendicular straight lines. In short, the so-called space, the so-called straight lines, are all nothing more than man-made, artificial constructs. <laughs> Wait, is she crying because she lost? Or is she crying because she finally found someone who understands? Um, what's wrong? Okay, she's happy. Don't, don't stare at me with a silly grin like that. I'm, am I at some verbal exam flaunting my meager, meager intellect before some expert? No, that's not it. I... I... <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. But that is adorable. It's way too adorable. Yes. At that point, I became a miserable bawling mess. A little girl who felt like she had just reunited with an old friend in a foreign land. If my present self were to see me in that state, I wouldn't be able to keep myself from lampooning the whole situation. But everyone goes through such a phase of unrestrained emotion, right? It's not an ugly thing. On the contrary, it's very beautiful. It's the kind of beauty that is engraved on the personal clock of your life. One that cannot be acti actively sought after, but instead comes to you fleetingly and serendipitously. Serendipitously. <laughs> for some, this moment of beauty comes at the age of 18, for others at 80. In my case, at age 8. That's all. From such a perspective, this man, who could keep up with all my craziness, he was truly exceptional person. Interesting. Given any two polyhedra of equal volume, is it always possible to cut the first into finitely many poly... Oh my goodness. Hadral pieces that can be reassembled to yield a second? I did not get anything. I don't have to though. <laughs> I feel that even if we stare at it for another hour, we won't be making any progress. Do you have any special ideas? Silence. I'm, sing I'm still thinking. Hmm, <laughs> then that means we both can figure it out. Let's see the answer. Huh? There's nothing wrong, right? We're here to explore the unknown, not taking part in some quiz show. But don't be so disgruntled. Every person's imagination has its limits. Only by learning and borrowing from the imagination of others will you be able to see more amazing vistas. That's so interesting. That's true. I mean, everyone has their kind of limits in imagination sort of so others can sometimes or like many times broaden the horizon <laughs> she's so she's so angry <laughs> let me see in this case an invariant can be defined according to the edge length and dihedral angle of the polyhedron what let me see it now S slow down, please. Don't grab it so suddenly. You're going to tear, tear the book. <laughs> to tell you the truth, of all the times I spent solving problems with that man, this is the only one I could remember. It wasn't only because the answer was impressive. I'd have you know, not long after, when I raised this question with Planck. Well, he used Hilbert's third problem to test you? Is he insane? Well... Such a horrifying event, of course. I would remember it for a lifetime. Was it really hor horrible? What? <laughs> ah. You want to know how I knew Planck back then? About that... I love more backstory! Everyone, let me introduce you to someone... Oh. This is Miss Emma Planck, the youngest physics professor ever to teach at Princeton University. Hi, I'm Emma, Carl's cousin. Oh, okay. I don't know whether he does it on purpose or not, but every time he introduces me, he always forgets to mention this. But it's not that I really care, right? <laughs> uh, um. uh, back to the topic at hand. Previously, we had initially discussed the possibility of allowing your child to advance to university directly. 
As soon as we all agreed, I contacted Emma at the first available opportunity. From the perspective of educating your child, her gender and age should be a strong asset. And that's not all. I'm also very interested in her too. Please, you must let her accompany me in chasing down the mysteries of this universe. <laughs> well, I don't think she cares that much. <laughs> Sorry, Emma can get a little overexcited on occasion. No, isn't that a good thing? I think our daughter will definitely get along with her. Okay, so a smile is like approval, right? <laughs> On this point, I also have no objections. If Cal was the one who introduced me to a new world, Emma was the ultimate navigator. Although, at some point later in life, I started calling her Professor Plank for fun. Emma back then... How should I put it? Didn't show any signs of the midlife crisis she has now. <laughs> Midlife crisis, really? <laughs> a consummate scholar, a consummate beauty. A woman who would always illuminate you with her own sunshine. She'd take you to play the piano, to sing songs, to watch the stars at night together. She was more of a mother than a blood-related one. Of course, I don't mean to imply there was anything wrong with Carl. This was purely a gender advantage. Carl, are you going back to Germany tomorrow? Yes. This weekend is the last day of my holiday. I have to report back to headquarters. Headquarters? The Allied Common... Oh my god, what? what? Com Commandatura? Berlin City Defense Headquarters. Psychological Counseling Office. Hmm, so you really are a genuine expert. <laughs> Only now do you believe me? You must have had a really bad first impression of me. Well, it certainly wasn't as good as you thought it was. But... Working at the headquarters, are you responsible for treating post-war trauma? Pretty close. It's a tough job if you're not a professional. After all, many people are not fond of hearing the grievances of others. Before long, they'll start feeling the same pain. Mm. How is a professional any different? How are they special? A professional, a professional treats the other person as a subject of analysis. We analyze their pain, treat their pain, but never let ourselves experience their pain. As soon as any personal relationship develops, the patient must be passed on to someone else for therapy. Yeah, I mean, that is how therapy works, like, for real. Really interesting, though, to hear it, like... I mean, actually, many of us probably have experienced it when, if we, um get told a lot of problems by friends or something like that or just like only problems from a lot of friends or something and you you start to feel down a little as well if you like only ever hear the bad things and only ever experience like their pain or their suffering then you're like oh, this is all so bad <laughs> so professional really is um always a good option i mean good solution so, is Carl handing me over to Emma? No, 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 that's not the case at all. Firstly, you're not a patient. Secondly, I'm not treating you. Emma's also not a clinician. <laughs> Seeing Carl's flustered face is so funny. Huh? Are you teasing me? You little brat, I'm gonna mop you up. <gasps> Uncle Carl is gonna hit someone. D don't cry, wolf, on me. <laughs> Stay still. <laughs> okay, that's adorable, but... There she was really like more lively. When did that stop? Or did she just, I don't know, didn't care anymore? <sighs> you tired me out. Carl clearly considers himself a young man, yet I didn't expect him to have the stamina of an old man. Well, watch your tongue. I blame it on Switzerland. Life is too comfortable here. Darn it. I really don't want to return to Berlin. In the future, will we meet again? Oh, oh, he doesn't... Yeah, if we can get a vacation. It would be nice if Carl were a few years younger. Huh? If only Carl were... 10 years younger? I could matchmake you with Sister Emma. Wait, they are cousins. They, they are cousins. Zish. You imp your evil bag of tricks is growing. <laughs> Indeed, Emma once told me... Men often call others evil, but in reality, they secret secretly look forward to being even more diabolical. Hey, what is she teaching you? <laughs> you think I would tell you? 
If you can, if you can, try and become 20 years younger so we can be Emma's students together. Oh, that sounds nice. Do your best, Carl. Emma, when did you... <laughs> if only Carl were 10 years younger. Even if you weren't 10 years younger, I wouldn't mind. You're Carl... Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, wh where are you going with that? <laughs> like, they are all teasing him, but still. At the time, although I was still young, I already had a th certain premonition. It would probably be very difficult for us to meet again in the future. It's just that, at the time, nobody could anticipate that the last day of that summer was also the last day that our life trajectories overlapped. Why? Carl was a very busy man and he never really enjoyed a genuine holiday. As for me, learning and conducting research under Planck, I cannot say that I had much free time either. Everyone was probably thinking, anyway, there'll always be time in the future. Oh god. Until three years ago. Now I'm now I'm scared. Stop. <laughs> Stop the train, I want to go out. Oh my goodness. Until three years ago. That's right. January January one. January 1st, 1952, the day the Honkai incident leveled an entire city. Oh no. <gasps> right! Oh my- I totally forgot that it was in Berlin and he was- oh my god. Oh no. <sighs> they really had to introduce him to us just so that we can now cry. Oh my goodness. Well, now I'm in an emotional. Perfect. <laughs> He was in Berlin at the time. That's right. Berlin. City center. Oh god, flashback. Carl, next holiday, you'll have to go help children in other places, isn't that right? Yeah, that's about right. The little brat has already found her own path in life, hasn't she? And in this world, there are even more people who have yet to find their path, and they need me to help them find it. <laughs> that is so you. Well, Emma, I'm leaving now. No, please wait a moment for me. Huh? No, it's not a it's no big deal. It's just that I remember. When you were at school, you used to participate in choir, right? Hmm I've borrowed our instruments without a hitch. I've decided on the song myself, without your permission, but I'm sure you know the lyrics anyway. What are you spacing out for? Go hurry up and grab that little brat. That foolish girl even tried to give us some time alone. Ah, So that's where it came from. Oh, this is really cute. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. I still... Is that a real song? I, I'm sorry, I really don't know that song. From glen to glen and down the mountainside. The summer's gone and all the roses falling. It's you, it's you must go and I must bide. But come here back when summer's in the meadow. Or when the valley's hushed and white with snow. It's I'll be here in sunshine or in shadow. Oh Danny boy, oh Danny boy, I love you so. I just look so, aww. Like that's so adorable, those three. But when you come and all the flowers are dying and I am dead, as dead I well may be. You'll come and find the place where I'm lying, and kneel and say an A there for me. And I shall hear those soft you tread above me, and all my grave will warmer, sweeter be. For you will bend and tell me that you love me, and I shall sleep in peace until you come to me. I hate it. I mean, I love it, but... Of course he has the, the, uh, the second verse, or like, whatever verse it is, where he's talking about his grave and his death like mm. i mean it's not obvious in, in the song it's not his death but you know I, god damn it let's see <laughs> that was depressing oh oh my goodness okay like i'm sorry but is rita rita like is rita rita oh my goodness this is the marquise I was ready to welcome Adam, but didn't expect George to show up soon after. What should I prepare for the main dish? Please advise. Now I'm scared. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, but... 
Even before I spotted her eating really adorable. I spotted someone here. And I'm definitely sure we all know who it is. <laughs> wow, okay, so the person that the Rita did not expect was probably her. Is what I think. <clears throat> okay. Wow, so sumptuous. I can't even tell which one's the main course. Don't hold back. Enjoy your meal. Oh, what's with wealth? What's with you looking so sour? Oh god, did I turn into Tesla? I... I can't stop myself from thinking about Berlin three years ago. Yeah. Karl. Marta. Innocent people like them. On that day, there were 300,000. 300,000? What kind of burden is that? It's not your burden, though. I mean, <laughs> except you, if you... Except if there is a Hersha <laughs> inside of him, which is highly likely. Um, you should spend more time with me, silly. Huh? No, there's nothing worth remembering in our life. So there's no need to dwell on the past. While worldly matters take their turn, ancient, modern, to and fro, rivers and mountains are changeless in their glory and still to be witnessed from this trail. It's a poem from some eastern poet named Meng Hauran. Ha ha Hauran. You know, sh you know Chinese, so you'll probably understand the meaning behind it better than I do. Well, I do not. <laughs> oh. Perhaps in the future you'll hear a lot more stories about the victims of the Berlin incident. In any case, please don't force yourself to graft their past to your future. There is no doubt that you are a man both blessed with divine luck and cursed with rotten luck. But you don't owe them anything, and neither do they owe you. It's your life, so just live on with a clear conscience. That's what I think, like, <clears throat> if he does not have anything to do with the outbreak. Aww. <laughs> I'll it. Yes. Yes, that's right. Good boy, good boy. Come, have some food. Tesla. What? Aren't you going to praise me? <laughs> What's the matter? People do occasionally show some integrity for once. So cute, Miss Tesla. What What do you mean, cute? It is adorable. So, so adorable. Although the guests enjoying lunch appear to number only a few, but the cuisine supplied by West Rift Kalita, ranging from foie grass to oysters, from tenderloin beef to langoustine lobsters, wow, okay. All kinds of meat have been made readily available, and the service is simply so extravagant that it makes some feel a slight degree of embarrassment. You guys, don't you feel ashamed? If you don't clear all the plates, how could you ever face up to the managers who worked so hard to prepare everything? <laughs> As a result, at 3 o'clock that afternoon, when the sunlight is at its coziest, the person who lived up to those bold, visionary words could only lie down. Spedangled like a lazy seal on her own big bed. <laughs> Spedangled? Is that a real word? Even if it's not, I really want to take that in my in my vocabulary. <laughs> Spedangled? <laughs> Stroll? No need to call on me for such leisurely old people exercise. B bowling? No, no, no. At the moment, I won't be able to play, no matter how hard I try. You go on and have a stroll. Tesla will go soak herself in the hot spring for a bit. <laughs> However, having said that, compared to her disgraceful history of eating herself straight to hospital, can this be considered a minor improvement? <laughs> I think it is. It is, definitely. Oh. <gasps> Again! Oh my god. I am so curious. Oh, you guys don't see. Wait a second. Let me let me move myself out of the way for for a bit. Here. Do you see? I mean, we should get introduced to her soon, right? I will still I will still go back in here in in the in the corner. Like, I'm sorry. I'm so I'm sorry, Fula. <laughs> Gloomy, cold, damp beaches. Wait, I didn't read the last one, did I? Winter, the time when the horizon is closest to us. Gloomy, cold, damp beaches, rust-marked ocean forts, 
various kinds of ships trailing thick smoke. This describes the entirety of the seaside view. Vicissitude, loneliness, a feeling of serenity. Huh? Hmm? That person over there. Have I seen her before when we were having lunch? Yes, you did. Oh, please talk to her. Yes, what about it? Not sure. But she definitely gives off a dangerous aura. Dangerous, really? That's interesting. <gasps> She's watching. Oh, damn it, you guys don't see. She turned her head. Should I, should I stay in this corner? But then, then we can't see the name who's talking. That would be confusing. I'm just going to move if she moves again. <laughs> Alright. Um, Is she talking now? Crap, she couldn't have heard. Could she? Oh, she did. <gasps> now everyone sees her. Oh, she's so pretty. Everywhere. Every time. Where a fisher boat dips by a waterfall. Where the air grows colder deep in the valley. The monument of Yang remains. Honestly, her hair, like here, these parts, they kind of remind me of ears. Like, uh, especially... I'm sorry, I haven't seen... No, Yai Sakura has her ears, like, up, right? But... But uh, Yai in Genshin has her ears down, and it reminds me of this. That's what I... <laughs> that's what I want to say. And we have wept reading the words. It's the second half of the poem from earlier. You understand Chinese, don't you? I can only speak a little. Are you from the east? Yes, looking at it from the local perspective, Shinzo is indeed to the east. Ah, yes. Let me give you this book. A book? For, for me? It's nothing. Just a collection of poems. After you've read it, you can do what I did before and show off your knowledge. But, but... It's nothing. I bought it on a whim. There have been too many things on my mind recently, and I simply cannot hold on to all this extra mumbo-jumbo. Besides, for it to cross an entire hemisphere and arrive in the palm of your hands, isn't that also some kind of predestined fate? Fate, you say? Yes. For instance, in that poem just mentioned earlier, Ascending Tianshan with the Sages. Geographically, Jianshan is just a small mound in the hinterland of Shenzhou. It's nothing compared to the five sacred mountains. Nothing compared to those snow-capped mountains. Nothing compared to the roof of the world. But a friend once told me that this little Xianshan is a location where the dragon vein passes through. It is a crucial key to the safety of Shenzhou. According to legend, one of the first ancestor, ancest, ancestors of Shenzhou, Fuxi, was buried there. With her own body, she stands vigilant over the dragon vein to protect this land. Again, I apologize. I don't know Chinese. <laughs> and I do not know if I pronounce anything, like, even slightly the way it should be. <laughs> Belt, can you translate what she's saying? Um, she wanted to give me this collection of poetry. Then she told me about a legend from the East. Nein, ist es nicht. Oh, it's not a legend. <laughs> I was just thinking uh, what she meant. Okay. Nein, ist es nicht. No, it is not. It's not some legend. The so-called dragon vein, in today's terms, is a subterranean river formed from leaking Honkai energy. All legends have their basis in some original truth. You. Who are you? Valkyrie Fuha. She is already a Valkyrie. That's so interesting. Okay. You could say I'm a colleague of Rihanna, whom you've met before. She has a very good opinion of your lot, you know. Um, thanks. <laughs> Today you may encounter a dangerous person who may even come across as a little annoying. But don't be alarmed. The least I can guarantee is that your personal safety will not come under threat. Adieu. Mr. Welt. Wetting themselves with their spit, how much better when they can forget themselves in the rivers and lakes. I wish you all the best of luck and hope you are prepared for what lies ahead. Huh. What a weird person. I'm... Hmm. So we will meet another person? Today? That is dangerous? That... That tone of her voice. Are we being watched? That wouldn't be weird. 
You only need to go off and do something of your own free will, and sooner or later you will end up being watched by them. However, it is merely watching. Are you sure we don't need to be worried? At least, whether it was Rihanna or Fuha just now, neither of them wanted to cause any trouble with us. Although this situation cannot be maintained forever, but all in all, you don't need to worry about the situation now. Ah, that's right. Hmm? Today's weather is not bad. Huh? I really like this beach. What? <laughs> Eins, what, what, what are you on about now? When the sun goes down, let's come here again, shall we? Ah. I have something good to show you. Ah, cute. Really cute. <clears throat> Late night. Breaking free from Tesla's exhortions to indulge in booze, Einstein and Welt languidly lie down on the beach, forming two sand angels. <laughs> cute. Oh my goodness, why is this so cute and wholesome? So cold. It was clearly warmer before we lay down. When one is lacking in exercise, it's only natural they would feel cold. Just get used to it. This level of cold is unlikely to make you sick. <laughs> Welt, this must be the first time you've seen such a clear, starry sky. S clear, starry sky. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that faintly visible streak at the very top of the sky. Is that the Milky Way? Correct. How about the stars? Can you recognize any? Um, this one over here is the Big Dipper. So that one over there is the North Star. Can you guys, like, uh, recognize constellations? Because I can't, so can you? Is that correct? Correct. Big Dipper. That one is probably the most famous group of stars in the world. Großer Wagen, Großer Bär, Big Dipper, Lau. Just the names alone form a long list. But for layman like but for layman like me, recognizing the North Star is the limit of my abilities. <laughs> that that would be me then. I'm Welt. Ah, ah, that is so cute. Honestly, they kind of look like siblings, <laughs> even though they're probably not supposed to be. But they look really cute together. So, do you want me to introduce you to some more? Uh, of course, can't get any better than that. To be honest, I'm very envious of those people who can just point out any star and call out its name. True, same. I really think that's so cool. <laughs> those are astronomers. Astronomers. Uh, <laughs> that's what I meant. However, if it's just a casual introduction, I can talk to you about it. Uh, let's just treat it as casual banter then. The young man's instinct is telling him that for the entirety of that day, everybody felt just a little more tense and strange than usual. Whether it was Einstein and Tesla, or the new acquaintances Rita and Fufa, everyone is apparently, by some coincidence, carrying a burden in their heart. Oh. Oh, I love that. At such a time, idle banter is probably a welcome necessity. That is very true. Like, it really feels like we are building up. We... It, Oh my god, it's building tension. And I, I, I think that's really cool, but it's, it's scaring me. <laughs> Even if it's just talking about nonsense. Want to gossip? Huh. That one there is the gossiping star. Wait, is there a star like that? Huh? Is there even such a thing? Of course not. I'm kidding. <sighs> why am I built and why am I always falling for those kind of jokes? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Idiot. <laughs> However, what I'd say next is more serious. How did you find the North Star just now? Um, follow the two stars on the head of the Dipper, then extend towards the center of the sky and there you'll find it. Good. Now please examine the handle of the Big Dipper. Take these three stars and imagine that they form a fully extended bow. Then take this bow and shoot an arrow westward, straight towards the Milky Way. Ah, there are three very bright stars here. It feels like they form a triangle. Mm-hmm. The two stars on either side of the Milky Way. Those are the famous weaving girl and cowherd from Eastern folklore. Oh? <laughs> Alone on the right side of the Milky Way is the Alpha Lyrae, the weaving girl of Vega. On the left of the Milky Way, there are two small stars accompanying Alpha Achille, the coward or Altair. 
The two little stars next to the coward are their two sons. Whoa. As for the one above, based within the Milky Way itself, that is Alpha Signi, one of the members of the Northern Cross. It, together with the three stars below it, and another star a little further away, together form the shape of a cross. By the way, Alpha itself is actually the tail of the swan. So, the long arm of the cross is the neck of the swan? And the two symmetrical parts on either side are the swan's wings? Interesting, though. Correct? Those are the major stars in this part of the sky. Now let our gaze return to the Big Dipper. <laughs> I love that we get a little lesson here. Follow along the plane of the Dipper Bowl. Proceed in the opposite direction of the Dipper Handle. That should also extend to a location near the Milky Way. Ah, this star is bright as Vega. Mm hmm, that is Alpha Origa. It and the surrounding stars form a pentagon, which is the main part of the constellation Origa. The two bright stars below this pentagon are the two heads of the constellation Gemini, Alpha Geminorum, Geminorum, and... Is that Beta? Geminorum? I'm sorry, I'm really bad with all of that. Now, let our gaze cross the Milky Way and divert southward. Do you see anything conspicuous or eye-catching? Oh, there are three bright stars close on the left. The other stars around them are also very bright. Mm -hmm. The middle three are Orion's Belt or the Hunter's Belt. Orion's... Orionis? Orion, uh, mm, I, I don't know, I'm sorry. I really don't know. It, anyway, it's called Orionis. <laughs> Together with Alpha Orionis and uh, Orionis above and the uh, Orion... Nope, too much. Below they form the main part of the constellation Orion. It's a pity that London's latitude is too high. Otherwise, at the bottom left of them, you would have seen the even more dazzling Sirius. That's the brightest star in the sky. Hmm, hmm. Let our gaze come upon the upper right part of Orion. There's a bright golden star here, and together with the several smaller stars around it, form a small V-shape. Hmm, hmm. Ah, is it the one sandwiched be between Orion and Origa? Hmm, that is Alpha Tauri. That small V-shape is the golden bull's head. By the way, I've noticed just now. Why are all these stars called Alpha this, Beta that? Because they were originally named based on brightness. Interesting, I didn't know. That's so cool. I love getting like just a little, little fun fact space sprinkled everywhere. W was it so? They actually all have their own nicknames, but most of them are in a foreign language, which, make, which makes them difficult to remember. Aldebaran, Ar 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 Arabic, Alpha Tauri, Capella, Latin and Alpha Origae, Castor and Pollux. Oh. <laughs> oh, I didn't even get that she was explaining. Aldebaran, Arabic, Alpha Tauri, Capella, Latin, Alpha Origae, Castor and Pollux. Greek. Alpha Geminorum and Beta Gemi Geminorum? I personally think that this kind of disorderly naming system is even less meaningful than the letter-based momen nomenclature. Ah, speaking of Alpha Tauri, on the other side of it, yes, it's the opposite side of Orion, do you see a bunch of tiny bright stars crowded together? Mm hmm? Ah, yes indeed. Densely packed, looks like there are six or seven. So those are the seven sisters. Seven sisters. Pleiades, the collective name for Atlas seven daughters. Atlas himself was a titan, lifting up the western sky. He is also the namesake for the Atlantic Ocean. Wow. I think that is really impressed. Like I'm I'm as well. Like Einstein is Wow. <laughs> Just wow. And I thought you were not familiar with constellations or mythologies or that sort of thing. No at all, not at all. But they really are quite meaningless. They're all just silly stories about this person dying, that person dying, then they all become stories. But that is still interesting. <laughs> but occasionally there are happy endings. Indeed, there is one right in our line of sight right now. Above the seven sisters, th to the right of Origa. One, two, three, four. Four bright stars neatly lined up. Can you see them? 
Ah, it's a little curved, but indeed, it's quite orderly. From left to right, there are Alpha Percy. I don't know, I, I won't. Mm, nope. Alpha Andromeda is also called Pegasi. It's a star shared by both Andromeda and Pegasus. Ah, so this is the story of a certain Greek hero who used Medusa's head to turn a sea monster into stone, rescued the princess who was to be offered as a sacrifice, and then married her? Mm hmm. Interesting. <laughs> this column of stars symbolizes the chains that bind the princess. By the way, the main body of the Pegasus is the quadrilateral at the end of this chain. You can also think of it all as the largest spoon in the sky. <laughs> then, if you go further to the right, is this the cowherd or altair that we had observed before? Can't you say... It looks roughly more like a raccoon. Raccoon, what? You see, this column of stars is the tail, and the extra star at the upper right corner of the quadrilateral is the head. Wow. <laughs> with such a long tail, it looks more like a raccoon from a comic book. N nothing wrong with that. Ah. What's that? The southernmost near sea level, a lonely one. Mm, do you mean the lower lower right corner, the position opposite Altea? Uh, yes, where, where you are pointing. That is Alpha Piscis Austrini, the only bright star in this area. It looks lonely. All stars are lonely. If the earth and the sun are shrunk to a size that we can place both in front of you and me, then to scale the closest fixed star will need to be as far from here as central London. Well, don't be surprised. From the enormous universe to the diminu diminutive atom, most of this world is nothing but a vast, empty vacuum. It is in this vast ocean of vacuum that all matter slowly converge together into discrete pockets among its under undul undulating ways. It took 9 billion years for the universe to finally create the Earth, and it took the Earth another 4 billion, billion years to become the Garden of Eden we see today. What's even more amazing is that in this Garden of Eden there is you and me. Hmm. Apologies. That seemed a bit too sentimental. Why? That's cute. Don't don't stop. <laughs> that's really interesting, though. I really like that. Even though that was a lot of interesting info, but it's fun. Winter is not a romantic season. If it can be said that on that day at the beach, a little bud had just sprouted between the hearts of two people. Oh then it can also be said that this bud never got the chance to take root and germinate as it should have. Why are they saying this now? No. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want that. I don't want to hear that it is already not... That it already could never... Oh my god. Mm, I'm scared. Like, they are so adorable together. But... Fate is cruel to them, huh? The modern age is not like the ancient era, and hot spring baths are also nothing like saunas. Taking a hot bath after stargazing, of course it would be separate for men and women. It's just that... <sighs> what? Oh my goodness, I'm sorry, but oh my god. I'm sorry, what? I... what? <laughs> Oh, okay, I cannot. Guys, they are doing this on purpose. He's hot, okay? Hey, how have you been lately? L lately. <laughs> oh my god. You see, just because you haven't seen a single man during the entire day doesn't mean you should lower your guard in the public bath at night. Isn't that so? <laughs> no, that is the end. Oh, that is so mean. Well, that ending was pretty mean. <laughs> I gotta say, now I got cliffhangered. But, wow. Okay, so, Rita was talking to someone, and she said that someone she did not expect also arrived. She could have meant Fuba or Otto, but I think she was talking to Otto. So I don't think she meant him, right? Is that, is that wrong? Well, I mean, I will probably see it soon enough. But is that really Rita? Like, the Rita we know? And, and, 
uh, what's with their ages? Like, why are all of them... I mean, why is Otto... Like, it's still so confusing to me. Like, Otto lived in, in, in the time, like, uh, where Alan Palatinus played. Like, like, in the time that Fuwa lived in. But he's still living. So, wh what's that? Like, <laughs> that shouldn't be normal, right? And, and if that really is our Rita, then she also lives a long time. So, oh my god. Guys, this is all getting so interesting. It's, it's, it's just building and building and building and I totally feel the tension. I really hope you guys enjoyed this as well. And I really hope to see you guys in my next video. And if you don't want to miss that, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It would really make my day. And see you guys, hopefully, in the next part.